Um, my name's Beata. I'm bringing you a story from a one small part of the world in Rhode Island in a corner in Central Falls in a basement in this building that's about reproductive health and women's rights and minority rights and social justice and poverty and immigration and every right wing, everything that we hate is in this building happening at a beautiful level and I want to tell you about it because it's this well-known, uh, well-kept secret and um, also because we're at this juncture where we might need some support. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm part of, I'm a pediatrician. I'm part of Blackstone Valley Community Health Center. It serves Pawtucket and it serves Central Falls. And I don't know how to work this. Oh, so <laughs> I'm gonna try this. Um, I'm gonna get through this quickly because I know you guys are all, you know, it's, it's a long week. Uh, it's only Monday. I know. So this is kind of the public health background of how I, how I got to where I am. You go through medical school, you do a lot of moxicillin in the first couple of years. Well, child sniffy noses, diarrhea. Oh my gosh, we're all the crawling doors of all these babies that are just like overwhelming you and slobbering and vomiting on you. And you're like, well, this is great, but I'm, I wanted to work in an underserved setting. Minority students, I was African American studies and women's studies undergrad. I knew I was urban, urban bound. I was a teacher initially, but I'm not an extrovert, so I tucked away into medicine happily ever after for so until now at least. Um, so here we are in Central Falls. I got this amazing urban community of like 70% Spanish, a lot of immigrants, people who have ankle bracelets on the parents, people who've been separated at the borders. People who are living, you know, three families, like one family per room in these houses, and we've incredible stories that I feel honored to be around and inspired by every day. And while they are what keeps me going, because it's challenging, um, but this is kind of the background of like stepping back into Anna's role in <laughs> public health and getting the broader view of like. Well, we know um, there's huge studies by C CDC, 17,000 people retrospectively said, you know, asked questions about abuse, substance abuse, neglect, mental illness, risk of violence, separation, divorce, incarceration, some of them re relating to the kid, obviously, but some are the elements of the parents. 10 points, one point for each kind of abuse. If you had any of these before 10 years old, basically you're uh, kind of on this road where it's like this graded, um, scale of the more points you get here, the more you're kind of moving along this pathway where you're a little bit more at risk for social stuff, a little bit more risk for behaviors that are a little bit more risky, a little bit more risk for disease and disability, and the more points you have, it, it basically lines up directly. So you say, okay, let me get out of this revolving door, diarrhea, asthma, everything, okay, what can I do in pediatrics that I gotta make it dead? You know, this is I can't just do runny noses and, and diarrhea for the rest of my life. You know, this is crazy. So, guess what? Turns out teen pregnancy, at least as a pediatrician, is one of these really impactful areas. And it gets to reproductive health, and it gets to children's health, and the parent health, and the high school education, and the education of the second generation. And guess what? Parents who have uh, kids at a young age, they're more likely to be associated, they're not linear, of course, but kid, the kids, the boys of teen moms are twice as likely to go to prison and juvenile out detention. The girls of teen moms, more, three times more likely to be teen pregnant uh, parents themselves, preterm, education stuff, all kinds of maltreatment, physical abuse, everything. So if you can interrupt this process, wow, you know, that's, okay, I'll sleep well, thanks. So that's kind of where I came in. If you go to, this is Rhode Island in general, if you want to look at racial disparities for pregnancy, we mentioned all the girls who don't want to have their babies. For me, anecdotally, it's more like 95% of the girls that I see. This is Central Falls high school teens, mostly Spanish, mostly immigrant, mostly poor, mostly just getting by with whatever they have. And it's kind of interesting because you can see, you know, of the teen pregnancies in Rhode Island, the rate for Hispanic girls is like more than four times that of Caucasians. Or, and you can just say, well, what's happening? Is this an access thing? Is this a, where are our clinics and what are they doing? And clearly we're not doing enough. And 
this is our problem. This isn't, I promise you, the teens want help. <laughs> and uh, I'll show you that, that this, the, the proof of that in the next couple minutes. But the teens want help if we're not helping them. These are minors. How come our laws are protecting them? How come our clinics are open doors for them? How come we aren't giving them enough confidentiality and security and how, what we're doing in our job to, to make it easy for them? So fast forward to Central Falls, where Central Falls had the worst teen pregnancy in the world forever and ever, Rhode Island three and a half times the state average, on and on and on, forever and ever. And it was like this this known entity, and you just couldn't touch it, and it's just like this red line at the top, and it's just like, thank goodness they're there, because it makes everybody else look really good. And we're all going down, because national averages are all going down, and that's wonderful for teen pregnancy. But if you look at it in terms of the percent change per year, look, it's 6%. No intervention, no nothing, no, nothing's happening in Central Falls except for time and people are getting onto the internet a little bit and just not enough action. So um, Central Falls said, we're willing to try new things. In 2013, they said, well, with the help of Dr. Fine and this community kind of um, neighborhood health station concept, they said, okay, we want a new health system, a new self health air system. We want a new, uh, a nice facility. And guess what? It just opened today. I had my first pediatrics day on the floor in this brand new $15 million building and I have beautiful windows and oh my gosh, I feel like I'm coming out of my basement and it's so <laughs> nice. Um, I'm just like giddy. But um, the other place I work is Central Falls High School. So they approved the, the only clinic in a public school. There's only three clinics in public schools in Rhode Island. And this is the only one to approve Title X services in that clinic. So all three have the capacity, because Thunder Mist does the other two, but the boards are like, no, nah, we don't have a problem. Bye bye. No conversation. Get out of here. Not even, don't even open the doors. So Central Falls have said, no, we're going to try anything. We don't want to be that, that, that anymore. So they said, okay, we'll allow Title X services. Blackstone Valley, figure out Memorial Hospital partnership, whatever they can do. For two years, they had kind of like shift work going. And it was okay, but nobody was kind of like, it wasn't this overall overarching theme or kind of coordination. So um, I got to come in. <laughs> so opportunity strikes, and 2016, I started working in Central Falls basement, in the next to the boys' sweaty locker room, and all the lockdowns, and all the craziness, and the girls trying to jump me because I said something that riffed them in some, some crazy way, I don't even know. And um, it's just a wild, it's a wild setting. <laughs> I feel like I'm going through adolescence every day, and it's like, wow, this is too much. Um, but what we did, it's really simple. We didn't invent any new medicine. All we did was open the doors. We didn't even advertise. <coughs> open the doors, out for birth control, confidential, free, no questions, everybody welcome. Come to the door, we got these little cute sassy gold packs. We got this, the stag pack. We got, you know, every kind of birth control. We're doing the next one on. We're doing 100 in the last two years since I got licensed. I love it. It's the best thing. That's the implant, three years. Best graduation present. Have a good life. Talk to you in three years. Come find us. Here's a number. <laughs> love you. Bye-bye. Teens make mixed. A lot of stupid mistakes, right? Anybody? <laughs> okay. So let, not, let one of them not be a baby, right? So... I try to do as much thinking for them as possible. Not that they're not capable, but they're just her hormone laden and like all over the place and their forebrains are developing and gosh, I hope mine does further anyway. But um, so it kind of works that I'm working with them. But, um, so I try to plan for them. I know who's due for their depo. I know what day to call them down. I know what class they're in. I know when their pills are due. I know when they're using them for birth control versus menstruation. I know if their parents know. I know which pharmacy they use, I know which insurance they have, or if they don't have insurance, or if they're not documented, or if they don't have any chance of being documented anytime soon. And we scrounge around for grants, and we scrounge around for help, and we have made it happen somehow in the last three years. We do STI testing, we do, uh, we get in everybody's business, basically. If I start asking you about your sexual health, it's, don't take it personally, I mostly hang out with teens all day, and it's just one of those things, it's like, that's my second question when I invite them into my room. So, <laughs> short, long, to long story short, three years of um, 
a great team, multilingual. I speak a good Spanish, not, not pretty, but it's good. And we have Cape Verdean native speakers. And it's a small clinic, but we do it. And we're mostly open and we're cutting back hours. But um, watch this red line now. is all you have to do is open the door. So this is an example of the best kind of healthcare we can do in the best communities who are just not acknowledged enough. Poverty, race, immigration, youth, women's rights issues, reproductive health. Health, anybody have another issue they want to add? Like it's, this is like the gold mine. It, I feel like I'm living a dream except for those like really hormonal moments where the mental health crises kind of move, uh, move in with the teenagers. But, so with a lot of drama as the backdrop and a lot of mental health stuff going on, we have done some good work. <coughs> and it's really been a scramble. There's no overarching plan. And we kind of are, we're kind of looking to make it sustainable. And so far there's no long-term plan. If I can tell you the history of other school-based health clinics in Rhode Island, they've all closed. And then they reopened and kind of meeked out a couple years, and then they closed. And then, you know, they, it's like these health clinics are doing so much. And school-based is not a money maker, especially when all your visits are Title X and they're all free. <laughs> and, and you're like, well, we're paying this whole staff and we can't bill. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? So it's becoming an issue. So I'm looking for crowdsourcing of creative ideas, whatever the form that is, whatever your expertise is, and whatever that looks like. Because I don't want this to go away. I'm scared it will, and uh, I can't. I'm willing to volunteer for the rest of my life, but my husband might say I need to get a job at some point. <laughs> so uh, we have to make it sustainable, and right now it's really, really hot. So I'm looking for ideas in all forms. This is our teen pregnancy study. This is all provisional data early. I bugged the statistics guy around the Department of Health, William Arias. He probably has like a voodoo doll in my, <laughs> my face on it. I don't know by now, but I'm, anyway. So 55% reduction in teen pregnancy. Wow, um, would we like to do this in every city? And there are some that are set up, and I'm starting to talk to them in Southgate, because I was at Thunder Mist for 10 years. It's a beautiful place. They're pretty much set up, ready to go. I'd love to go to their board, and I'm starting to reach out to Lauren and everybody again and say, let's go back to their board and show them now, because guess what? This is the other thing. Preliminary again, but one year isolated for 2018. Central Falls for the first time in the world is not the worst. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right? So that's awesome. So now, um, for those really conservative board members up in Winsaka that wouldn't hear us before, I want to go back and I'm going to say, hey, now you're the worst. Hey, come on. <laughs> you're, you should be humiliated. You should be looking at ideas. You should be looking for help. Um, and not, not that I'm a bully, but okay, if I have to do that, I'm willing to hear it. So, Chlamydia, this is not as good as it looks. I just got statistics today. 2018, this was only before the summer. Apparently summers are pretty active, so we got another, <laughs> we got 146. Somehow we did the exact number as last year. 10 positives, it ended up 6.8%. Still a reduction of about 24 to 27% in chlamydia. So we're making progress. Kids are still sleeping around, still whatever they're doing. You know, friends with benefits and all, everything in between. So now, um, I'm, I'm just looking for ideas. So can I just jump in too? So yeah. I've encouraged Beata to think in terms of fundraising and specific numbers we can give out. So just to give you a sense, a $4 contribution to the Central Falls Health Clinic gets um, a student a month of oral contraceptive pills. $44 gets a three-month supply of Depo-Provera. Um, $88 buys nearly two years of over-the-counter uh, of oral contraceptive pills or a shot, and $364 gets a student a three-year reversible birth control um, procedure. So I just wanted to put some numbers, if anybody brought their checkbook tonight, that they'd be able to help, but this is something we want, Rhode Island now wants to be able to help promote because these are so many of the issues that matter to all of us and everything that we've talked about tonight. So 
maybe at some point we'll be able to share a link to donate online, but there's a lot of red tape, but checks are available to be accepted, so please talk to her. But basically, tonight. if you're interested in what we're doing, and if you want a tour through our high school, it's really fun, and VIP, come in groups, we do next one on parties if you want one, you know, like, <laughs> we actually do that for you, but you know, you're under 21. Um, but, you know, we make it fun, we make it safe, we make it, like, this is the kids' clinic. This is what it should be for health care. We have a question with I didn't bring my checkbook, so can I put the check in the mail? What Absolutely. Is your so, this is my contact. <laughs> I never turn off my phone. My teens call me in the middle of the night just to tell me they have a word they want me to check. So I'm like, what? But we have to make checks of it. We can put out the information, but it's Blackstone Valley. It's Blackstone uh, Valley health. Community Health Care. Okay. It's a nonprofit, 501 C. Okay. <laughs> tax deductible you have to mention that it's the school and we take it from there and I'm I'm so grateful for this arena and this opportunity. Paula has yeah. a question too, Go sorry. ahead. Thank you. So well actually I have a question sort of thinking about you two coming together. Um, I'm a physician and I practice up in, in Worcester in the Ryan Medical Group. I oversee. Yes. <laughs> I met you maybe 20 years ago. Wonderful to see you again. But um um, I oversee a program uh, of uh, about 700 elderly uh, frail patients in their homes and we live on capitation basically where the only way we pay for these services are because what the services we provide putting nurse practitioners and physician assistants in patients home to, to care for them there check on them um, it pays off in the long run in terms of decreased ER stays hospital stays, skilled nursing stays, depending on the metric that you look at, somewhere between three to one and eight to one return on investment. I'm thinking, you know, if you've cut down on the babies that would have been born, that are not being born, opportunity costs. that's money. I presume if those, ba you know, those, those teen pregnancies, they go through the system and somehow, somewhere, someone pays for them. And I suspect mm -hmm. a lot of it gets put through the <laughs> the Medicaid system and whatnot, and you know, and also just releasing money for the families. You know, if they're not having to pay, spend money on diapers and whatnot, that's money that could go into the community that supports housing, that supports taxes and whatnot. So, you know, I wouldn't just think about this in terms of you know grants and whatnot. I think there might be a big stash of cash there if you could figure out what you're preventing and. And how well, some of we are definitely that, that starting a good conversation, and I will let. I, we're just. You guys are more focused on my Brown students than lecture. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, so I know, but we're going to solve the problem, and we're happy to be um, a way to get information out and to make these connections. And so, thank you so much for being here.